Hi, hello, I'm Marina. You know, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants. <laughs> and welcome to Millennium Planter. So, quick rundown. In my whole plant parenthood journey, I've been collecting plants for almost five years at this point. And as you can tell, I really don't have many big plants. Uh, because I'm constantly cutting my plants, constantly. I just cannot put the scissors down. I am always, always trading. Trading is just one of my favorite things to do, and it is like the number one way I have gotten so many plants in my collection is just simply do, doing, doing trades with my friends, and it is just, it's so great, and I love being able to share uh, plants with people, especially if it's like a wish list plant that I'm able to gift to them. I just, I love doing that. It is my jazz. And this past summer, I have really made a point in not cutting my plants. Um, and I somewhat did really well with that. Oh, I wonder if my Hoya opened. One of my Hoyas is about to bloom. And I'm pretty sure it's Hoya Obscura. Um, and I've never had her bloom before. Um, I'll get the identification for sure when she blooms, but I see like she has her really big like umbel and it's so pretty. And I don't think it's bloomed yet. It doesn't look open, but it just caught my eye. Sorry. <laughs> what was I saying? So I, I was somewhat successful in not cutting a lot of my plants. And that's a big reason why also I made this little dedicated corner here of plants that I'm not going to cut. And I'm just going to truly dedicate growing them as big as possible. I've even <laughs> really set back mainly Hoyas from cutting them so much. I've lost my Hoya polyneura from cutting her too many times. My Hoya megalast I've also completely just ruined from cutting it too many times. So have I learned my lesson? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Maybe. But I have been getting the itch to propagate again. <laughs> my prop bin here is officially empty and I have been trying to phase it out for a little bit because it's just too big and I don't have the space for it. But I do have smaller prop boxes that I think it can fit on my shelf in the top and I just need to cut stuff. And then I also realized I have a lot of leggy plants. Well, not a lot. I have a few leggy plants that really need to be propagated downstairs in my bedroom. So we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be propagating all of my leggy plants. I'm also working on making a really full string of hearts plants. A few of them, I have my silver glory. I have the variegated string of hearts and my string of daggers that I wanna cut and propagate just so I can get fuller pots from them. But they they all are growing phenomenally well. I'm actually really happy and I can't wait to show you those updates. And who knows, maybe I'll get crazy and throw in another propagation or two while I'm at it. Um, I, I guess we'll, we'll get into the video. So it's kind of a long intro. Uh, do you guys, are you guys like me? I'm genuinely curious because there's definitely two different types of plant parents. The people who do not cut their plants and will have like these crazy overgrown plants or it takes them a very long time to cut their plants. Or you just like me and you pick up the scissors and you can't put them down. <laughs> Let me know in the comments because I am genuinely curious, but also doing all this propagating has really just helped me understand plants a lot better and propagating a lot better. It is how I found my love for perlite propagations, especially because while I was doing all these propagatings throughout my years, uh, I rotted so many things in sphagnum moss. It was terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And now for the most part, I just use moss poles. Um, I don't even do any moss propagations. I've actually been doing a lot of soil propagations, but we'll get into that. Let's just get into cutting. Actually, the first cut I did, I did this yesterday, and I am rescuing my friend's Monstera. It was just extremely, extremely leggy, and every time I went to her house, which was often because we both have kids that are best friends, and we also happen to be best friends, Every time I went to her house, I just heard this monster screaming at me. Help me! Help me! I'm so lucky! I need more light! I need my glow up moment! So I finally convinced her to <laughs> let me rescue it and chop it. And she already has a really big, beautiful monster, so she does grow monsters really well. But I think this one, just because it's a juvenile and juveniles usually do need a little bit more light. I think that is why this one got so leggy. So I chopped it in five pieces and I am just going to stick it in this vase of water. I have pretty good success rate with Monstera Deliciosas and water. And these are just so thick. 
Oh, I'm not even sure they're gonna fit in the vase. Ooh, I don't have anything bigger. Okay, I'm just gonna have to raise the water level up a little bit on this. Uh, but they have really thick aerial roots. And I let these callus overnight because this is a pretty thick stem. Uh, so hopefully they will, no, not hopefully. I know that they will uh, propagate okay. And then I'll be able to give her a nice, beautiful, lush monstera. And I still have two, those two stumps in this big old pot. It's actually pretty comical looking. That's just the size of the root system that the monstera had. Because this is a well-established monstera. This is actually one of my monsteras I gave her um, probably a year ago. And yeah, it just, it needed this makeover. So I'm excited to propagate this and return it to her with like a nice, bushy, beautiful monstera <laughs> and not that legginess that it was because, ugh, that was not it. If your monstera is leggy, you need to give it more light. <laughs> and then maybe this is your sign to cut your monstera and propagate all the pieces. And also, if you didn't know, I probably should have explained this earlier, but if you don't know what the term leggy means, it's basically a word given to a plant that has a lot of spacing between the stems and the leaves. So most times when a plant gets leggy, it's because it's not getting enough light. So as a plant starts to grow, um, <laughs> it won't put out a leaf until it's getting enough light. So a lot of times you'll just see all this stem before you see a new leaf and uh, the, the plant just looks really bare and really leggy. Another reason could also be from underwatering. If you are underwatering, watering a plant, most times it's going to lose its lower leaves and the lower leaves will leave a really bare and leggy looking stem. And sometimes the best thing to do is just to restart the plant. I have done this many times, um, restarting the plants <laughs> and they always bounce back stronger and even more beautiful. And it's just, I don't know, it's just sometimes plants need it. Um, so got this monstera here, probably going, I don't know where I'm gonna put it actually. It needs some good light. I'm probably gonna put it on that shelf, but it also makes me nervous because it's filled with water. It'll be fine. All right, so here is my String of Glory. So, little fun fact, uh, String of Glory is definitely a cultivar of String of Hearts. Some people think that they're kind of like made up because a lot of sellers like to just make up words and names for plants, even though the plant is no different. But the thing about Silver Glories that I've noticed is that they have a very different shape than the String of Hearts. They're kind of more almost apple shaped than heart shaped in the String of Hearts. And then I've noticed if they're getting a lot of light, they will get very shimmery and very uh, silvery. It's very cool. I love this plant a lot. Um, I grew this from little tiny cuttings, which was also kind of just really rewarding to see, but I'm slowly just working on getting this more full because this is just too scraggly for me, if I'm being honest. I want to see more locks. I want to see more hair. I want thicker, thicker strands. So I'm going to cut her up a little bit. And I think for the most part, I'm going to do soil propagations for my string of hearts because I don't have a really big success rate with water prop propagating them and then transferring them into soil. Uh, for some reason, this plant specifically, every time I do that water to soil transferring, it just goes terribly wrong. <laughs> Mainly because they need a lot more water when they're so small um, versus when they're really long. So I end up underwatering the, the plant, the new cutting, the new propagated plant, and it ends up shriveling up and dying. So I'm going to soil prop them and then hopefully I will be able to Stick them in the top once they get a little bit bigger. I might do the butterfly method. Um, I don't know, we'll just see how, how I'm feeling. All right, I don't think I'm gonna cut too much. I always try to make my strands even and for some reason, they still end up growing <laughs> really uneven. Um, I think maybe I'll just cut them here. So not too many. Oh, this one's like a brand new one, but oh well, maybe I'll... Okay, I have about that much to work with. I'm just going to put this on my prop bin. And while I'm at it, I might as well just cut my string of hearts too. You can see this one is a lot thicker. I've been working on my string of hearts for a while. She is a bit thirsty though. She's definitely gonna need a bigger pot, which I don't know what I'm gonna do because 
this is already a pretty thick pot. <laughs> but this is what her top looks like. It actually looks pretty good. I've been tying a lot of the vines around and keeping them in there, topping them off with soil. And it has been working. I have been getting a lot of like little baby growth from these vines just growing. And then you could see my failed propagations. From what I told you about earlier, I just can't keep the watering right when they're so small. So I almost have to wait for them to get bigger before I prop them back in the pot. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna cut some more of this. She's also just really long and kind of needs a trim. <laughs> I always, not gonna lie, I hate how tangled they get because it just looks so matted. But at the same time, like who's gonna spend this much time untangling the Strait of Hearts? Not me. <laughs> And another key factor I have found in String of Hearts care is water. Water is crucial. I know people always say that they're super easy to rot, and I'm sure that's the case, but also they do like water, especially if you're giving them light like I am, if they're under grow lights or in front of a bright window. Try, try, try not to wait for their leaves to get limp. Try to wait for the pot to dry out before the leaves get limp. I know it's like a fine line, but try to find that medium and you will get bigger, thicker string of heart leaves. I promise you, um, I have really good examples of that downstairs, but I started to do this with my plants, especially the ones downstairs, and their leaves are significantly bigger. It's, and it's crazy. Um, so it's like a little secret hack tip, I don't know, <laughs> that a lot of people don't talk about. All right, and then that is the string of hearts. So the only thing is they kind of get overwhelming when there's a lot of cuttings of them and so many nodes, but they'll do fine, they'll do fine. And now my hands smell like freshly cut plants <laughs> or freshly cut grass. <laughs> okay, now here I have my Hoya Rotunda Flora and I don't know what's wrong with her. It could be flat mites. It could be, I don't know. I really don't know. Flat mites is really the only thing I could think is wrong with her. Um, so I'm just going to cut her a lot. I'm not going to cut her up completely, but I need to just trim her back some because she's just not happy and it's making me really sad because these Hoya, like these leaves are just so freaking cute. And I don't want to lose this plant. I've already checked her roots. Her roots are actually pretty decent. Her roots weren't as extensive as I thought they would be, especially because I've had this Hoya in this pot for a while. So I don't know, it could be a watering thing also. I do have a tendency to underwater my Hoyas a lot and a lot of consistent underwatering will make for a very unhappy Hoya. I will tell you that. All right, I'm just gonna do it. Yup, yup, there we go. I'm just gonna keep this here instead of chopping the um, the vine off because I have found that Hoya vines without the leaves, so essentially like a Hoya wet stick, is so, it takes so long to grow, so long. I have propagated many Hoya wet sticks and they take like, six months minimum. I feel like it's a lot faster with aeroids. Like I feel like aeroids take a long time, but not as long as Hoyas. And then their sticks, their vines are just so thin and it's so easy to rot. Like, ugh. Hoya wet sticks are just <laughs> a whole other, a whole other thing. Do I want to chop her again? Ugh, just makes me nervous because I know how badly some of my Hoyas have reacted, but I mean, she can't do worse than she's doing now, right? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Although, if she does have flat mites, cutting her is definitely not gonna help. But you know, guys, I am not ready to cross that path yet. I am, uh, <laughs> I will order a microscope soon though. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, flat mites are very microscopic, literally they're microscopic mites, kind of like spider mites. And it's been the biggest craze in the Hoya world, um, specifically in the US part of the Hoya world, because apparently flat mites have been a thing or a known thing in Europe and like Sweden for a while. Uh, <laughs> and we're kind of now just figuring them out. And um, Adam, Not Dude, and then Betsy Begonia have done videos talking about them. Uh, 
Basie Plants has done a video talking about them and a lot of people are finding them on their Hoyas. And like I said, the only way you know you have these is if you see those, if you get a microscope and you look and examine your leaves. Now, some telltale signs of flat mites are specifically if your Hoya just has a lot of like dead start so it shoots out a vine and the vine doesn't ever do anything and it kind of just dries up and dies off like a new growth i think that's the biggest sign of them and then the only way to treat them is to use a sulfur spray a sulfur powder i'm pretty sure benign makes a sulfur uh powder so <laughs> it's just a whole other realm and it's different than like treating thrips and mealybugs so yeah it's just a whole other thing you have to invest in you know like a different type of pest control a different uh way of diagnosing your plants and that's why i haven't been ready yet um i just need to order all the things and that takes time and so for now we are just going to be propagating this rotunda flora and hoping that it's just going through something and it's not flat mite related <laughs> so i'm just gonna leave her like this she has this one little vine here and we'll see what happens with the vine. Hopefully it'll shoot off a new healthy vine and that'll grow perfectly fine. But for the time being, I have these two pieces that I'm going to propagate and I feel really good about these. I think they'll grow really well and curl lots of leaves for me. And then one day I'll have a really full and lush rotunda flora. <laughs> In the bedroom now, I am working on adding more plants to this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put longer plants, longer macrame hangers, I have to make them, um, and have them kind of fill out this bottom half here. And then I will add, probably add a couple more plants down here. I did have to, um, I don't know, actually, oh, I think what happened was I just moved the plants outside. So this has been really bare. Um, I did recently have to move my spider plant that was here because my cat found it finally um she's always getting into my spider plant you can see the little baby here it's still there it's just a little memory uh but yeah so now my linearis lives there and the spider plant is upstairs i told my cat to say no to drugs um hopefully <laughs> she stops chewing on it no now she can't reach it because it's in a really high up spot so i want to propagate my curtisii i was actually taking some pictures for work um of this curtisii and i realized that it is quite leggy in some areas i definitely think this is because it lost some leaves from inconsistent waterings so yeah i'm definitely going to chop probably these two um, I think those are like the most bare stem, maybe this one too. I was thinking about doing my linearis. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know yet. Definitely want to do the variegated string of hearts. Once again, I just want to also make her a lot more fuller, but this is actually what I wanted to show you. So this is my string of, st of the, I can't talk, my string of daggers. And as you can see, how little and puny the leaves were at one point compared to what they look like now they have gotten massive just look at that comparison fat leaves little leaves it's crazy um and all of that is just from watering it more and now the leaves are so thick and so juicy um but i'm gonna cut this one i just tangled it all up but i'm gonna cut that one and propagate it some more and i think that's it i have my salted pecana here that i really just don't know what to do with i have the propagated pieces upstairs but these new pieces <laughs> have grown in so tiny and small uh, but they have aerial roots, so I don't know if I want to try to get them to attach to this and see what happens, or if I should just, like, pot this plant something in something else and use that pot for something, because I really love that pot, and I think it needs to be displayed better. I don't know, though. Well, I somehow broke this entire strand, <laughs> so we'll be propagating that. I had to cut a big chunk for my variegated string of hearts because um, she's just getting too long and it doesn't look nice when they're trailing on a windowsill and then my cat just wants to chew on them. So uh, that should be enough. 
<laughs> plenty actually. Oh, and I did forget to mention, I also am gonna propagate my Cebu Blue because after I chopped her, she's just not getting enough light to put out leaves. She's just putting out a lot of runners. So I'm gonna chop her back, way back, and see if that does anything. All right, so now we have that. I'll probably end up potting these back into that soil as well and make this more full. And I think that's it. <laughs> so I might have flown too close to the sun and taken too many cuttings <laughs> because this is a little overwhelming, but <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I also forgot to mention I did cut the Curtisii. I didn't show that one, but it's cut and um, yeah, I'm going to do just soil propagations for oil, all of these because I don't have any perlite and uh, maybe I'll do some water propagations as well because I have a little propagation thing that I might just stick them in, but mostly they're all going to be in soil. So I have oh, my soil mix here and a couple of bins. I'm just going to do all the strings first. They're all really tangled up. Also check out these uh, shears. I want to use them <laughs> to cut up that Monstera and uh, I was not expecting them to be this intense. Like it gives me Edward Scissorhand vibes. Okay, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to fill this up. This was a previous perlite propagation box as you can see and I'm just too lazy to clean it out and like I said I've been doing a lot of soil propagation lately just because it's so easy I always have soil on hand and uh, I feel like if I'm having a lot of success or since I've been having so much success with soil propagations lately um, and I don't like to use perlite in my soil I might as well just stick with soil propagations and then I don't even have to buy perlite anymore uh, but we'll see how that works long term because a lot of my uh, propagation problems happen in the winter time, obviously. I do tend to get a lot of rotting plants, but now that I have the plant room and it stays really warm up here, I don't see that being a problem. This mix here might be a little too chunky for some cuttings. Let me get to the bottom and get some more cocoa out. I feel like now at this point, I kind of have the hang of all propagation methods. So at this point, if I have something failing in soil, I can use whatever else I have on hand as a backup. So like right now, I guess my backup would be sphagnum moss because I have sphagnum moss. But it's kind of cool when you get to a point in your plant journey where you feel like if one method fails, then you have another backup that you know you can do <laughs> like yeah i've had a lot of rotting situations with sphagnum moss but i get the hang of it now because of all of my failed attempts so i need to like keep this organized because i do want to pot these all back into their original pot i don't really want to have an assortment of string of hearts like in one pot if that makes sense like i don't want to plant my string of daggers <laughs> in like my variegated string of hearts so I'm going to try my best to keep this a little organized, but that's going to be a little hard because they're a string of hearts. So I have my daggers here. I'm just going to cut them and place them right in the soil. I'm not being super careful with these cuttings, as you can see. Like You can definitely cut more of that stem area if you want, but I'm not going to do all that. You definitely want to make sure you get those nodes planted in the dirt though because that's just the best way of making sure your plant <laughs> grows roots the key definitely with soil propagation is humidity humidity is going to be your best friend and i would even say it's not even necessary to completely saturate the soil because that is how you're going to get root rot and how you're going to get just like a bunch of mush is if you completely saturate it. So usually what I'll do is I'll take water and kind of like gently water the sides so that it's sort of moist, but the humidity goes way up and that's how plants just really thrive. And then you don't have to worry about any sort of transition period when you're ready to plant them up in a pot. So I'm pretty much doing two nodes at a time. 
this is going to be fun to pot up <laughs> when it's time. I wanted to put more than one <laughs> uh, strings of things in here. So I still have like all of this left. I guess this is just going to be a whole box of string of daggers. So those are all nice and planted. I could probably put some more stuff here in the corner. I'm really trying to use up as much space as I can because I don't have many containers to put all these cuttings in. And for cuttings like this, the thin, the vine is so thin, you really don't have to wait for them to callus over. If it was like a thicker stem like that Monstera, I definitely let that callus overnight because that stem is thick. These shears were even having troubles cutting. That was kind of crazy. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna put in this one. So we have the String of Daggers and the Silver Glories in here and today's date is September 20th. So when everything is like really gr growing well, I'll do an update video. I might share some updates and like a couple plant vlogs though. So we will close this one up and I'll water it at the end. Right now, I think next I'll probably do the Hoya. These are just some extra pieces. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all of these little pieces yet. I have this other propagation box. So I have the Rotunda Flora. And I'm really temp- I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna cut some of this vine. And um, here is the wet stick. I'm going to just stick this um, in the soil and see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> Usually what happens is that they grow roots fairly quickly, but then uh, for them to grow leaves just literally takes forever. Oh, and I have sap everywhere. <laughs> but now I have this very long stick. I think what I'm gonna do is just stick this in a pot. That's what I'm gonna do. I did that with my Hoya Linearis. Wow, this is literally flinging sap at me. It's so funny. I put my Hoya Linearis just a straight into a pot and it's rooting really nice, some cuttings that I took. So I'm gonna do that actually. And I'm gonna leave this stick in here. I have this Hoya Curtisii. I'm not gonna cut up much. I'm just going to leave that in here, let that stem root up. The good thing about Hoyas is that they grow roots from everywhere. So you need the node for new plant material, like a new stem and leaves. You need nodes for that. But, and typically with aeroids, you need a, no a node for the roots to come out. But with Hoyas, roots will come out all along the stem. So you don't even really need to pay attention to where the nodes are because it'll just grow roots all along the stem. It's really cool, but you do need those nodes to produce more plant. So that's really cool. It's a little cool experiment. If you ever have like a long Hoya tendril, uh, just stick it in some soil and it'll grow. I'll stick a couple of these Cebu Blue props in there. All right, that I'm going to close up now. Okay, these are some Hoya cuttings I've had propagating in uh, soil for a while, and they're definitely ready to be potted up. So I'm just gonna leave these on the side. Hoya methyled. Oh, that one's hefty. She got a thick root system there. All right, so we're gonna leave those there. This I'm going to fill up with the variegated, what is this called? <laughs> String of hearts. I have no clue what this succession rate is going to be, but it'll be interesting to see how it happens. Okay, I think this is about as much as I can fit in this box. Now I'm just going to lightly top it off with just a little bit of soil just to ensure that all of the nodes are nice and covered. And this is another reason why you don't want to like completely saturate your soil. I mean, if you happen to try this technique, this technique is very um, like set and forget type of thing. This is why you don't want to soak your soil because those leaves will definitely rot. But if you're using the same technique that I'm using, uh, where you just water the sides, it's perfect because 
that humidity will just help everything out. And this is just a technique I've kind of <laughs> formed over time. I never really saw anybody do it. I just kind of accidentally started to do it and it's worked for me and it's really easy. Okay, so I still have all of these string of hearts left and the regular string of hearts. So I think I'm just gonna put everything in a pot and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have uh, four pots. So let's see who we can plant up. I'm gonna put my rotunda flora in here. Um, it looks like kind of like an octopus with all these crazy legs. Oh, that's so funny. Um, and I will, I, I don't know what I'm gonna put these in because they do need high humidity. I don't know, I'm just gonna have to find something to contain them in because this prop in here it's just too big for like these little plants. Humidity is just so crucial for soil propagations and propagations in general. I definitely need to put these in something. I just don't know yet. And then next we have these uh, string of hearts, the regular string of heart cuttings. And here's this one. <laughs> this is so comical. I probably should take more cuttings and put them in here. Uh, it's cause it's not a very full plant. Uh, I'll probably do that tomorrow or something. <laughs> All right, and here I'm going to put the variegated string of hearts. So this kind of ended up being a like intro to soil propagations. Uh, that's not really what I intended, but uh, do you guys do soil propagations? Let me know in the comments. It's not really like a common practice, I feel like amongst planty people on social media. Uh, like you always see like sphagnum moss, leca, perlite, but you don't really see just many straightforward soil propagations. Uh, yeah, it's just very easy, especially if you already use soil. I think that's the, that's the key. Using what you grow your plants in is probably just way easier, especially transition wise. Like if you use leca already, it's probably easier to propagate in LECA and then transfer it into LECA because there is no transferring. So the same thing with soil, like soil propagation is just really easy. The transferring part is easy. Okay, so I chopped up the Cebu Blue, so that's in there. And then this is the variegated string of hearts, which would actually be really cute once it grows in. I know this all looks like so crazy right now and bizarre, but we just have to trust the process. That's just what we have to do um, in uh, this whole plant world and propagations. You just have to trust the process. Um, and then once you get used to doing these kinds of things, you can really just envision the end goal. Um, I've done this so many times, so I know how this is all going to come through. <laughs> Probably not going to be 100% success rate and that's okay, but for the most part, I think everything will be fine. We have these three bins as well. So lots of propagations happened today, lots of soil propagations. I hope this was like able to help you out a little bit. Hopefully you were able to find some tips. If you haven't tried soil propagation, I say definitely just give it a try. Um, fill up one of these old containers, old to-go containers uh, with some soil, moisten it a little bit and just see what happens. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really super easy and it's really just like a set and forget kind of thing especially if you place it under like a grow light all of these are going to go right under grow lights in my top shelf uh so yeah i can't wait to share updates <laughs> and share with me in the comments your favorite type of propagation method at the moment and as always i hope you all stay safe sane happy and healthy and i will see you all in my next video bye